Hello, this is the video that accompanies lesson three for Robot Basic. Its purpose is to help you get started with variables. Let's take a look at some examples. In Robot Basic, we have a print statement. You could say something like print 35. If you run this program, notice it prints 35 on the screen. But instead of using numbers, we can create variables. A variable is just giving a name for something, in this case, for some number. We could say, for example, that a is equal to 27, and then instead of printing 35, we could print a. And Robot Basic will know that we're referring to its current value, or 27. If we run the program, we see the 27. If we say a equals 27, b equals 14. We can also tell the computer to do some math for us. We can say that c is equal to a plus b. So we're telling it to add them together. If we tell it to print c, it will print the sum of a plus b. In this case, that would be 41. Run the program, and we see the 41. Now that you have a little idea of what a variable is, let's look at some ways that, that can help you see why variables are useful. First of all, we'll erase this part of the program and start over. Robot Basic has a rectangle command. We can tell it to draw a rectangle. The first two coordinates, the first two numbers, are the coordinates of the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle. Let's say that's at 100 across and 200 down. The next two numbers are the coordinates of the lower right-hand corner of the rectangle. So let's move it over a little bit. Let's say to 300 across and down. Remember, we started at 200, so let's go down a little further. Let's say at 250. If we run this program, we see it draws the rectangle on the screen. The problem is these numbers don't necessarily represent particular things like the width and height because the width is actually the difference between the 300 and the 100 because this 100 is where the rectangle started, 300 is where it ended, the difference being 200. The rectangle in this case is 50 tall, the difference between the 200 and the 250. If we change all this, we can make it much easier by using variables. The starting position of our rectangle is at the variables x and y. The ending position needs to be x plus the width. So let's make it x plus w, where w is the width of the rectangle. Notice this means if we start our rectangle at 100 across and we have a width of 300, then the lower right-hand corner would be 400 across. That is the 300 to get to the left side, the 100 to get to the left side, plus another 300 to get to the right. The same thing's true vertically. The lower right-hand y-coordinate would be y plus the height. All we have to do then is set up these numbers. Let's say x is equal to 200, y is equal to 100, and then the width of our rectangle could be 300, and the height could be 50. If we run this program, notice we get this rectangle. Let's go back and look at our numbers again. It should be 200 across and 100 down to get to the beginning. It's 200 across and 100 down. The width and height are controlled by the 300 and the 50. We've got a 300 wide and a 50 tall. Now we can change this very easily now because we have variables. If I'd like the height to be three times as tall, we could make the height 
150. If we run the program now, notice how much taller the rectangle is. Now let's say I want to take this rectangle and just move it way over here to the left. If I want to move it just very close to the left hand side, instead of starting its x coordinate at 200, we could start it at 5. If we run it now, you'll notice we've moved it only 5 pixels from the left hand side. Now let's suppose we wanted to make a very thin rectangle. We could make the height only 15, for example. If we run that, notice the height of the rectangle is only 15. If you study chapter three, chapter two, lesson three, you can learn a lot about how these things work and why variables are so important. One last thing. First of all, let's go back and make our rectangle taller. Let's look at it. If we just change the word rectangle to the command circle, all it does is create a circle or an ellipse inside of the same size that we had before. As I said, there's much more to learn in Chapter 2. Go study it. I hope this helped you get started.